hats. So it's really an honor and a pleasure to be able to be the uh, young doctor representative on Wonka World Executive and also on our National Association for Family Medicine and also be the president of this event. But it wouldn't have been possible without an amazing team that has worked together for two years to make this event come through. So we work very hard and we really hope that we meet your expectations. So our program is all around teamwork. Um, Stronger Together, charting the course to navigate the future is our core team. So in order to make it real and to make it tangible, we prepared a lot of sessions for you. Um, and they're very innovative. So we have the unconference sessions and we are very grateful that all the authors took up this challenge to submit new sessions and we hope to make it all as exciting as possible. Um, this is the biggest forum until now. So we have over 300 participants and we have... <laughs> We have all seven Wonka regions here represented. So there is one person from each region. <laughs> we also have prepared some surprises for you. So please pay attention to the posters that hang on the walls that have QR codes. So please be attentive and check out what they have in store for you. The forum did not begin today. We had our free forum exchange with 17 participants. And from Monday onwards, they got to know how Portuguese healthcare system worked. It's a national healthcare system, and we hope that it helped to get more knowledge and to see how our country works. While here, um, we hope that you enjoyed the city of Porto. Um, it was elected the best European destination for many years, more precisely in 2012, 2014, and 2017. So it is a city brimming with excitement. Um, there you go. Just trying to stick here. Yeah. So this is Porto, and this is your host city. And last but not least, I would like to introduce our mascot here, <laughs> which is, <laughs> well, he's a dragon. And you know that in Portugal, we're uh, a lot of fans of football. And it so happens that the national, well, not the national team, the city team of Porto has a mascot, a dragon. So. This is the dragon. It has been our mascot in, throughout the host organizing committee. And it's like here in a symbol of a good luck. So thank you for all. Hoping really that you enjoy the forum. And we are excited that it's here now. All the best. <laughs> I give now the word to Claire Marie Somers, the VDGM president. Seamless changeover. Okay. Wow. How exciting to look out and see all of you here together with us. It's an absolute pleasure to welcome over 300 young doctors from around the world, passionate about our profession of family medicine. But not only that, also recognizing our colleagues from the world of Portuguese family medicine and medicine at large, um, the inspirational members who have been from Vasco da Gama's past, Vasco da Gama's present, and hopefully our future. Um, and of course, our esteemed colleagues from Wonka Europe and Wonka World. 
Stronger Together, what a fantastic theme. Since this theme was first chosen two years ago, I think it's become more than just a theme. It's become a mantra for people around the world. Congratulations to our host organizing committee for their insight and their forward thinking. This is exactly the call that we need at this point in time. In Strasbourg last year, we had no borders. In Prague, we grew together in diversity. And now here in Porto, we will chart a course together for the future of family medicine. We are living in unprecedented times. I'm not sure if you've noticed. We have escalating global pressures, environmental, economic, social, political upheaval, and some would say some failing systems. And in our consultation rooms, we see the symptoms of this manifested in the lives of our patients. Hands up, who here has seen a rise in social isolation? Hands up, who is seeing an escalation in preventable non-communicable diseases? Some, some of you are doing a good job of keeping it down, so well done. <laughs> <laughs> we see the struggles of migrants, the disenfranchised and the vulnerable, and we despair at the rising inequity that hinders progress. But under pressure, we have two choices. We can crumble and turn to dust, or we can come together to be a diamond in the rough. Some choose to blame others, to protect yourself at the expense of others, or at the very least, indifference to their suffering. This only serves to exacerbate the status quo, the inequity, the isolation, and the conflict that ultimately leads to further decline in physical and mental health. However, we can be diamonds, like Aesop's fable of the bundle of sticks. We are stronger together than we are apart. We are challenged now to band together to find creative intersectional, intersectional solutions to challenges. There is a slow call rising around the globe from all the seven regions of our Wonka world from individuals and communities to reach out to each other and find new strength and unity. At the intersection of all our experience, which you'll be exploring here, lies the catalyst for inspiration and a motivational drive for innovative change. We must think differently. We must think together. We cannot be complacent and wait for the storm to pass. It's not going to. We cannot wait for help from above or outside. It won't come. And we cannot look backwards to try to create a time gone by. It's no longer relevant in the world we're in today. We must talk, share, listen, create, and innovate together. As the journalist and author Naomi Klein said, small steps will no longer get us where we need to go. We need to leap. And this, for those who are new, you'll find out, and for those who have been here before, you'll already know, this is what Vasco da Gama movement is all about, sharing and learning together. Our Portuguese hosts are creating a challenge for us. By integrating icebreakers into every workshop, they're enhancing our connection. By encouraging the use of innovative and creative facilitation techniques, they are shifting our perspective and pushing us outside the box. And with their unconference sessions, they are recognizing that we cannot simply do what we've always done before. We must think differently, bravely, and freely to chart a new territory together. Like Vasco da Gama charted uncharted waters many years ago, we must dream of the future of our profession and navigate a course together. So this weekend, I invite you to let go of your reservations, open your hearts and your minds to new possibilities, and enjoy two wonderful days of creation together. Have fun. Thank you. on behalf of the Portuguese Family Medicine Association. And as Anna already told you, 
Dr. João Sequeira Carlos was a past president from our Family Medicine Association, one of the founders and the first president elected from Vasco da Gama. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I request that someone bring a lion, a green lion, please. <laughs> <laughs> Honorable President of the Portuguese Medical Association, Honorable President of Wonka World, World Organization of Family Doctors, Honorable President of Vasco da Gama Movement, Honorable Chair and Member of Host Organizing Committee, and uh, Rui, thank you for symbolically give me the share today of our association. It uh, means a lot for me. Thank you, Rui. Distinguished authorities, guests, dear colleagues and friends, it's an honor to share with you this special moment. I'm very grateful to my association and to Vasco da Gama movement for the confidence they ever had in my work and contribution to general practice and family medicine. Thank you. I'm also very happy to see friends and colleagues very significant in my life. Today is a moment of happiness with strong emotions. Luis, Job, Rui, Paul, thank you to be here. It's wonderful to see how certain was Sir William Osler when saying more than 100 years ago that the great republic of medicine knows and has known no national boundaries. Tempus fugit. Time flies, but medicine's founding principles keep us together in a universal mission with our patients. Tempus fugit, time flies. So let me propose a break in this fast speed voyage and look back to the past honoring the history of Vasco da Gama movement. My first daughter, Matilde, is 13 years old. She was born in 2004. That was a fantastic year. Seeing her growth and multidimensional development reminds me every day Vasco da Gama movement with the same age and challenges. So, yes, yes, you all know, it was also in 2004 that uh, Amsterdam hosted a disruptive, meet, a disruptive meeting just before Wonka Europe conference. The backstage work was colossal, combining politics, science and friendship. A very special person was particularly shining behind the process. Fonds will always live in our hearts. He was a wonderful human being and a fantastic colleague. It turned possible the journey we all, you all made together. Thank you, Fonds. We went, we went out from Amsterdam WID would be later Vasco da Gama movement. The first interim executive group started from there, a unique adventure remembered today as the mission of their lives. Observing the process from here, it looks like an easy route. We assume as normal the fact of every Wonka region having its own young doctors movement. Well, the road began also in 2004 in Wonka World Conference. The news from Europe arrived quickly to the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, and the Wonka world invited Europe's young doctors group to Orlando. There, the model from Europe was presented, and you know what happened. A few months later, in January 2005, exactly 13 years ago, the group founded in Amsterdam had a week weekend meeting in Lisbon with help of a magnificent group of senior advisors, Fonsips, Justin Allen, on that time president of URACT, Luis Pisco, on that time president of the Portuguese Association of Family Medicine, and Athanasios Simeonidis, representing the COS Conference Organizing Committee. With the, with the help, we achieved a new milestone. A name for the group, for the group came up exactly on the 22nd of January at 7 PM, Vasco da Gama movement <laughs> was born. 2005 was definitely the year of affirmation. Europe and Wonka world were looking to every step we gave. And after an exceptional meeting in Maastricht, 
Vasco da Gama movement was about to be officially approved by Wonka Europe. As stated by the working party of Junior Doctor Project in Amsterdam, the enthusiastic involvement of the young participants in European matters is a promise for the future. This is the best way to get the youngsters on board in the unification process of general practice and family medicine in Europe. In cause, Wonka Conference, World, Wonka, Conference Wonka Europe Council meeting voted favorable to VDGM constitution, being formally accepted as a new group in collaboration within the organization. Igor Schwab on that time, sorry, Igor Schwab on that time, Wonka Europe president, said in this conference closing speech that Vasco da Gama movement was the best thing that happened to our organization in the last years. As a past president of Vasco da Gama movement between 2007 and 2009, I'm still committed with the premium movements of Vasco da Gama movement. I always feel an emotional liaison with the group. This will last forever. I'm sure all the colleagues who, ever, who have ever participated in Vasco da Gama movement in some way feel the same. The pioneer group primary objectives are still respected by current members and executive group. The legacy of Vasco da Gama movement will be kept by successive generations of young and future general practitioners. Never forget that we can only build the future and live completely the present if we know and respect the past. It's a privilege to address these words in Vasco da Gama Movement Forum and a great honor to celebrate another achievement of our group. Congratulations to the organizing committee and all collaborators. I will finish quoting Michael Kidd's speech in Lisbon Wonka Conference in 2014. He said, Family medicine has the power to transform the world. Have a nice event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing so many beautiful memories from the history of Vasco da Gama. And now I'll pass the word to Dr. Miguel Guimarães, the president of the medical board. Good afternoon to everybody, dear speakers and the distinguished guests. Special compliments to my friends, colleagues, to Rui Nogueira, to Paulo Santos, to Luis Pisco, but for all of you that are in the table with me, thank you to be here. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to be the hosting you all here at the Portuguese Medical Association, Ordem dos Médicos, Secção Regional do Norte Ordem dos Médicos, for this fifth Vasco da Gama Movement Forum. I welcome and congratulate all Portuguese doctors and all our international colleagues, and I hope this meeting will be the most productive in terms of exchanges of knowledge and experiences for us all. Strong together, charting the course of to navigate uh, the future is the theme for this forum. Indeed, we must focus on the future and we, we have to protect our patients in this future. Family doctors face a lot of challenges now. In Portugal, according to a recent report from the European Union, State of Health of European Union, there is a shortage of family doctors, a situation that may worsen in the future with the retirement of family physicians currently in the services. The scenario in Portugal is identical. And even worse, if we consider that the doctor-patient relationship has been constantly threatened. There are not, not enough doctors for all our citizens 700,000 Portuguese do not yet have a family doctor, unfortunately. And doctors have endless lists of patients. 1,900 patients per family doctor 
an average incompatible with the quality of medicine that all of them deserve. The health status of the world population has improved considerably over the last decade. The increase in life expectancy in Portugal has even exceeded the European Union average. It's more than 81 years old now at this moment. But health-related quality of life in Portugal has not been improved, especially after the age of 65. Our citizens need access to health care to family doctors. According to the late, latest data from the Ministry of Health, Portugal is currently missing 524 uh, family doctors. Under normal conditions, in the next five years, more than 1,800 1, will retire from, by reaching the legal retirement age. We must look into the future and create work conditions for our new college. In Portugal, professional development continues to be a priority to the Portuguese Medical Association. It is essential to keep on training the best medical experts, the same physicians that will continue to apply good medical practice defined both nationally and internationally. I take this opportunity to express my appreciation for the excellence of Portuguese and European family doctors and for the enormous contribution that all have been given to the development of the new medicine. Also worth to Portuguese doctors who have organized themselves in medical careers at the level of the public service contributing to the health care of the Portuguese and to the training of new specialists, an area that where Portugal has always been at the forefront. I would, I would also like to address directly to the Monke, which has been so relevant in this field of work. A special thanks to the Portuguese Medical Association of the Family Doctors, Associação Portuguesa de Medicina Geral e Familiar, that has also been so committed to the defense of the medical career and the resizing of the lists of patients, relevant matters when we talk about the near future. Finally, I sincerely wish that this event matches everyone's ex expectations. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a great time in Portugal and in Porto. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. And thank you for hosting us in such a, I'm sure you all agree, beautiful and for us significant venue. Thank you once again. And now please, Professor Amanda Howe would say also some words. Professor Amanda Howe is this you all pretty much, I know, know the president of Wonka World. Thank you, Nina. Thank you, colleagues, for your previous words. And greetings to all of you here. I'm very glad to be back in Portugal. I've been coming here since my own children were small, and I find it a very interesting place. So I hope you will all enjoy, and thank you for hosting us in your beautiful country and city and the lovely venue, actually. Um, welcome to you from the Wonka Executive. I'm delighted that my colleague Anna Stavdal, the Wonka Europe President, Jörg Metzemakas, uh, old Treasurer, previous President, and Anna Nunez as the Young Doctors Leader are all here on behalf of the Wonka Executive, who are always delighted to hear what the Young Doctors are doing. You seem in every region, I'm pleased to say, to go from strength to strength. I was fascinated to remember the history, but actually it shows in a way, and I'm proud of this, that it's just in the last you know, 15 years that this has become a really firm part of the Wonka family. And of course, Vasco da Gama began that, but you've also given a lot of energy to the other regions to develop their own young doctor movements. So thank you for that, and I'm sure that 
in ev most ways, things will go from strength to strength. I'm going to have a keynote tomorrow, but I just wanted to use my few moments here to put a little bit of context to the meeting. We've already had a moment of truth with actually the uh, medical workforce gap for the Portuguese people. I have been at the World Health Organization this week. For those of you who don't know, uh, Wonka is registered as a non-state actor at WHO, and we uh, attend the executive board, which happens in January, and the World Health Assembly, which happens in May, to try to fulfill our mission to advocate on your behalf to develop the discipline of family medicine for the good of the people of the world. And so one thing we know in advocacy is you have to advocate up to the big strategic groups, which is WHO, and you should also advocate with, so we're talking about Stronger Together, making the alliances with other groups who are working in a way for the same principle, but may also be a different constituency. So at WHO, we, talk, we speak to statements, if we can, in the assembly itself, and I did that um, earlier this week. But we also meet, for example, with the nursing group, with the World Medical Association, with the medical students' representatives, the IFMSA, the junior doctor group, and together, I'm trying very hard to use those collaborations on your behalf to build momentum. Because in this period, and I'm talking this year now, we have a great opportunity. In the autumn, it is the 40th anniversary of the Declaration of Alma Ata. And WHO will make a very big deal of this. Over the next few months, there will be many meetings, many um, moves towards a declaration, and then after that, uh, implementation plan. And what I heard this week is that Wonka needs now to work very smart and very firm and very clear to make the best of our alliances and to have our vision as part of this very visible declaration. Now, what does that mean? So I think be, to be effective when you work together actually means you have to have a plan, you have to agree a clear message, and to some extent you have to agree who will carry it forward. So it's something about doing what you can in your country, with your member state, your ministry, who will represent you at WHO, with the other professional groups who are also interested in strengthening primary health care for universal health coverage. It requires those who are professional leaders to be speaking in their forum. What does universal health coverage mean? What will it look like? I talk a little bit more about that tomorrow. But it also means in your own place, if you have patients who can speak up for family medicine, if you have case studies that we can usefully perhaps use to put on social media to show what we do at this stage, we will be asking you for this. So these are exciting times, but we must work together to be effective and to do that complicated thing that you coordinate, which I know Claire is so good at coordinating the energy of all of you, but still delivering what each you individually can. So let's work, do that, and then also meet again. You know, we have Europe meeting, we have our regional meeting in Middle East coming up, we have our meeting in Seoul, we have virtual opportunities. So again, we can bring each other forward and work together for good. I look forward to getting to know many more of you this two days, and thank you, and have a great conference. Thank you for your inspirational words and thank you all for being here and honoring with your presence at the opening ceremony. So now it's time to, to move on to our first keynote lecture. It's entitled Stronger Together, Networking Across Borders in Primary Care, presented by Dr. Anna Stavdal. Anna is the president of Onca Europe, but above all, a family doctor with a true passion lying on the clinical field, also reflected on the volunteer work we know she has been doing throughout her career, 
So please give a warm welcome to Anna to the stage. First problem, only a technical one. It's already on. Yes, it's already on. Yeah, good. Excellent. Thank you, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the nice introduction and the invitation to be here. Um, congratulations on a wonderful program. You put a lot of very, um, I mean, topics with high actuality for family doctors on the program. I'm looking forward to, to be with you over the next couple of days, and I feel honored to have your attention at the very first session of the forum. I just have to, uh, Nina, I, there is, I, I don't see my pictures here on, so it's, it's not synchronized, and that makes it a little bit uh, problematic to me. Yeah, but it's not here. Yeah, but it, it's not my presentation. <laughs> Someone said that devil lies in the details. Here we are. There you go. Yes. Okay. There we are. That's something else. Okay, to network, we have to find out uh, who we are ourselves and who we are networking with. So I will give you just a few, a little bit, pieces, some pieces of information about myself. Here you can see me in my professional home, to the, the left, left picture is here. Um, in my practice, where I've been in the center of Oslo for the, almost the last 30 years, with a patient I've known for almost as, as long, and with my youngest colleague in the uh, bottom left corner, who is finishing his training to be a family doctor this year. On the right side, you see me uh, skiing outside Oslo last Sunday. And um, that's when I ponder, you know, tasks like this. I'm going to Porto and to speak about networking across borders to young doctors. What am I going to say? What can I teach them? So, and underneath, uh, another venue where I recharge my batteries, uh, a summer meal with my extended family. Now you know a little bit more about me. Besides that, uh, I am a family doctor, I'm a university teacher, and uh, as you now know, the president of Wonka Europe for this term. Two questions helped me to organize my thoughts and reflections uh, while preparing this talk. And we are networking as we speak, so we can use this situation and we can ask ourselves, what do we have in common? And what are the borders? I will focus now on both. What do we have in common? We have Wonka in common, a global network of academic organizations in family medicine, distributed in seven regions, more than 150 member organizations and more than 550,000 GPs. And you can see from this map that Europe actually is the biggest, by far the biggest region, which I think reflects that we have long and good traditions for family medicine in our region. And we are in Europe. Wonka Europe, one of the seven regions, represent more than 120,000 GPs. And the work is carried out in six networks, of which Vasco da Gama is one. We have networks for education, quality and patient safety, research, prevention, and rural medicine. And we also have special interest groups, or the, the ones in the bottom here, in specific clinical fields. I mentioned this, I mean, about 
Wonka world and the different regions, because many of you, uh, I think, are not aware that you are members of Wonka, even. Can I see how many of you consider yourselves to be members of Wonka? Okay. How many of you are members of, of uh, Young Doctor Movement? Yeah, more people than, yeah, it's something strange here. I think more of you than uh, the ones now raised your hands are members of Wonka. We are Wonka. You are Wonka. We are Wonka together. <laughs> what more do we have in common? It has already been mentioned. And, and uh, thanks to Kyle Hodebeck of the Polaris and Luis, and I now have forgotten his last name. We have this map with family medicine in all these languages. Uh, so we share family medicine and we share this goal. We want one family to have one family doctor. This is a picture from Kyrgyzstan. Uh, and here, uh, this is one setup of family medicine with two doctors in the same room, seeing one patient each and sharing one nurse. That's not the way we do it in Norway, uh, but these are only two uh, versions of family medicine. There are a lot of setups. You will know that. Some of our colleagues, family doctors, they, they um, carry out uh, many surgical procedures. Uh, they are delivering babies um, in other countries. Family doctors don't see children and pregnant women. We have the full range, and we should be aware of that when we network. And so family medicine means a lot of things, and we have to find out what does it mean for you when we network and when we speak um, about strategy and our common work, as Amanda just described. We have to. We have to, to find out, to, to reach this common goal, what we have in common and what we mean, what is our, our context. In Europe, we try to, to describe family medicine, a golden standard of family medicine in the European definition, here displayed as a tree. If you don't know it, uh, have a look at it. It's, uh, you can find it on, on our website and many other places. And I will. I will especially draw your attention to the roots. And I think that is really what we have in common, whatever setting we are working in, and whatever status our trade has in our country. Attitude, science, and context. Now, that was what we have in common. Let's explore the borders. Joao, you said, family medicine knows no boundaries, or you, you, you quoted Michael. But there are some borders, and we have to uh, recognize the borders to understand, yeah, understand each other. The borders will not vanish uh, if we only close our eyes. Some of the borders are very easy to, to spot, the national borders and the regional borders. We know them all, and it defines our legal status. I know there are people here from, from six other regions, and you, you uh, might um, want to correct me when I say that looking <coughs> to Europe, at least for many people, it looks as it is one, one unity, and that it, it looks very attractive to be part of that unit. I think we have paid too little attention to the impact of the national borders, actually, when we network in, in Europe. Just look at the political situation. Um, in our effort to, to build the union, I'm not against the union, and here I stand, I'm not uh, either against or, <laughs> or in favor. I, I'm just... <laughs> drawing your attention to, to it. And if you look at the political trends um, and the trend of xenophobia in many countries, it's co uh, connected to national identity. 
I think we have these trends in all our countries in, in Europe to, to, to uh, different extents, but it's there. And when I'm here, and I'm showing you a picture from, from, from my home base, I'm Norwegian. I'm proud to be Norwegian. I am Norwegian, as I hope you are proud to be uh, and to have your nationality. And it defines more, that's my <coughs> point, it counts. It defines more than we used to, used to, to think. Or as we, when we speak to each other, we say things like that. There are no boundaries. But there are. So we have to identify them. Anyone? Or who, who thinks, who think you know, you know who James Baldwin was? Show me a hand. Yeah. This is about generations. James Baldwin was um, an American novelist and social critic in the last century. And I'll just share this quote for your reflection on what I just said about nationalities and national borders and also regional borders. I know I don't have to remind you that we have we have a lot of or huge waves of migration into <coughs> Europe and within Europe. Western civilization would either be open for all to enter or demolished by those excluded. Well, back to borders, it's all about people. I mean, when we network, all about people and it's all about context. Let's look at borders by fr frame of reference. I'm sure you, you, you know the word. And just to, to clarify, what, what do we mean? This is one definition, a structure of concepts, values, customs, views, by means of which an individual or a group perceives or evaluates data, communicates ideas, and regulates behavior. On the group level, this is what we call culture. Culture doesn't exist on the individual level. I mean, culture <laughs> is, is connected to, to interaction. And uh, these circles So just illustrate that, that your frame of reference can be very different, very different. Uh, it can be partly overlapping or almost overlapping. To identify borders when we network, Maybe you, you could think that it's, it's easier the more similar you are, it's easier. But sociological research tells us that no, it's much harder to recognize the borders the more similar we are. We get blind and so we are, we are, we are like each other here. We like each other and we are like each other uh, and uh, the borders on the individual levels are there. And I'm not saying that we, are, we should find them to, to stick to them, but to understand. Because networking is hard work also. And we have to understand who we are and who the others are. So frame of reference, important. You might say that frame of reference, or I say, that embedded in frame of reference, we also have prejudice. And that is often <coughs> perceived as a word of abuse. But we all, I mean, we all have prejudice. And it's not dangerous unless it's combined with bigotry. Prejudice helps us to navigate. But we must be ready to be, have, have our prejudice corrected. Yes. How many of us are native English speakers? Yes, and we speak English. The power of language. I mean, I was not now pertaining to English as <laughs> such, but we speak English. And the power of language cannot be <coughs> underestimated. I know if I should give, would give this speech in Norwegian, I would, of course, be much more nuanced. And um, I think also more to the point, and I could use 
fewer words because I could be more precise. And speaking of matters of your heart, and that is also something we should, we should not pretend as if this doesn't matter, even if we try all the time to speak as native English speakers, people like myself, you know, and this sounded really good. <laughs> you know, there are worlds apart sometimes. I'm sure you agree with me. This picture is also from Kyrgyzstan, and interpretation of language is much more than <laughs> the language itself. I mean, the words, word by word. This is Salima Sidukova and me uh, at a television interview. She was my interpreter in, during four days in Kyrgyzstan, um, on all levels. And I was, I mean, I was helpless without her. Russian, or Kyrgyz, or Uzbeki, or whatever the languages were, of course. So, as I said, the, the longer the distance between the frame of reference and the culture, the easier to, to see it and feel it. It doesn't mean that it doesn't exist here, the language barrier. What about age and generations? You recognize a bunch of hippies when you see, see them, don't you? <laughs> and um, maybe the people to the right here are the same people as we see in the, in the picture uh, to the left. These guys to the right, this is from an ad for an elderly center in Oslo. And it says, Monday, uh, the 14th of April, the retired ones, it says. That's the band. We are playing music from the 60s, when Beatles, Everly Brothers, and, and likewise um, were, I mean, making the hits. Nice. And most of you, I mean, can I ask how many of you are um, between 40 and 50? None. <laughs> how many of you, yes, one? <laughs> and uh, how many of you are between 30 and 40? <laughs> yeah. How many of you are between 20 and 30? Whew. That was a surprise to me. I will not ask, I mean, <laughs> the rest. <laughs> but believe it or not, and we are, we are speaking about prejudice. We are quite rigid when we think of the generation before us or after us. <coughs> that we know, I mean, they are very different. I mean, these people you see here in both pictures, they, they, they have the same passion and they have the same dreams but some of them <laughs> have tried it in real life. <laughs> this is the moment where I bring greetings from the executive board of Wonka Europe. And I'm very prou proud to say that we are really age-wise a diverse group. We have two people in the 30s, two in the 40s, three in the 50s, I think, and we had two in the 60s <laughs> until our immediate past president stepped down just a few weeks ago. And, and honestly, this is invaluable, the, the age uh, mix. Don't you agree, Raluca? Yeah, we challenge each other. And, and, and it's, it's really, I mean, if we're, and I think because of the, of this wide range of age, we, if we didn't want to, we, we have to listen to each other. Gender is not, uh, it's not a simple thing anymore. As you will know, it is a social, gender is a social construct and describes what we, what we recognize as, as masculine uh, and, and feminine, but in many respects not only on the biological, uh, biological um, based gender definition. Parenthood is not what it was either due to, to modern technology. I mean, mom and dad. This is also what gets into people's frame of reference. Not to speak about religion. Uh, even if there is no scholarly consensus 
about what is religion. I think we can agree that religion impacts almost every situation. It can spark a discussion, escalate a conflict, and sometimes also uh, do the opposite. And this is so much impacting our frame of reference when we meet on individual level and group level. Medical students from Afghanistan studying in Kazakhstan. I met them, they were not at the meeting, but I met them outside the, the meeting uh, venue. I've mentioned nation, age, language, gender, generation, and most likely also religion. I mean, if I were to, to network more than having a, a nice chat with them, which I had, um, we would, both sides would have had to, to, to recognize these borders, respect them, understand them, and network across them. We're moving from gradually from the individual to the more general level, uh, group level, cultural level. This is my husband. Um, he grew up on the farm on the left side here. And this is me. Um, I grew up in the city of Oslo. You see, you see the distance from the farm down to the mailbox. It's, it's some hundred meters. That was not the fact when I, where I grew up. Not to mention the distance to the doctor and to the hospital when he grew up. And it took me many years to understand how this difference has impacted our frame of reference. And I could have entertained you with a lot of episodes and, and, his, and stories about that, of course. This, um, um, the other pictures here are, he takes on a locum on a summer farm of, a, of a, some friends of ours in July each year, milking the cows and tending to the, to the wild uh, sheep uh, and so on. And when we were, I, the city girl came up to, to visit him last summer. Uh, all the cows after the morning milking, they came to greet me. And it was very touching. Uh, all of them, you know, she's new. What is she doing here? It was so, it was so relaxed when, you know, and he said, and, and I, I was moved and we laughed a bit uh, about it. And he said, you know, Anna, understanding farmers, farming people, if you start with understanding the animals, you will understand the people. <laughs> and I think he's right. Uh, because in, in that culture, animals and people are two sides of the same coin, so to say. Um, yeah, it was good. You should try it. It was, uh, it was very nice. And when they came back the same evening, the cows, they were so, they were so young. And they were, they said that there's a, a change in the rain, you know, uh, in the farm. So they were, they were impossible to steer like people. Okay, other borders. Um, the clinical and the research setting. We, clinicians, we are the real cowboys. I mean, we are riding out in um, all sorts of weather, uh, whereas the researchers, they have the evidence. They can uh, separate myths from, uh, you know, yeah, they are the elite. I'm, of course, this, these are caricatures, but I think we hold these caricatures uh, when we network over this border between the clinical setting and the research setting. <laughs> Not to speak about when we network, and of course we have to, and we, we should, and, and, uh, and for the best of our patients, network uh, with our colleagues in secondary and tertiary care. It was very tempting to, to take this cartoon, and it's, it's not um, fair to, uh, it's not fair to, uh, to our colleagues. Um, the hierarchy is different. Uh, the selection of patients, as you know, is different. Um, the differences are so much bigger, at least that is my experience, than we, we like to think, and that they like to think. 
and we lose, uh, we, we don't use the potential of understanding each other. Um, we don't use it um, as we should, at least that's the situation in, in my country. Tomorrow, you will have a keynote on, on uh, networking with patients, so I will not uh, go more into that, but that's another border, of course. That said, we are all patients. I mean, it comes to everyone <laughs> at the point. <laughs> so it should be easy to identify also with, with patients. I mean, because we, we do get sick and we do live lives and crises occur also in doctors' lives. We know a lot about that. More about um, on, the, on the system level and the organizational level. The borders defined by having different mandates, still overlapping activities. When I, when I entered the Monka Europe Executive Board in 2010, I was given the task to establish a um, channel to two other organizations, the Union Umbrella and the European Forum for Primary Care, which is an interprofessional organization. Um, we have a channel now, uh, and I think one of the success factors is that we actually explicitly focused on mandate and roles. What, what separates us? What are the differences? We know that we work for the same goal. This is a matter of the heart for me, because I think doctors, not only in my country, but definitely in my country, they are not, we are not, um, good enough at separating the roles, defining when we have uh, the different hats on. When we speak for, our, for family medicine, we shouldn't speak uh, about what is good for business. I'm sure you read me. Already mentioned again by Amanda, being lobbyists. And the borders between the lobbyists and the policy makers. Um, there are maybe two important arenas on the European, uh, in the European region. It's the WHO, Europe, and it's the European Union. We have quite some a way to go to, to establish um, um, collaboration with, uh, with the European Union, uh, or to, to uh, yeah, have a channel um, there. When it comes to WHO, we have succeeded but I will say one thing to, to fill out also what you said, Amanda. Um, it's not necessarily so that you will see the results of what you're doing the next day or the next year. It takes time. We're doing all this, and I will uh, end now in one and a half minutes. Um, we do this, what we're doing, networking in and for primary care. Because of this what Barbara Starfield sort of gave us evidence for, that what we do, a freely chosen primary doctor, is associated with better health care, more adapted health care, better health, and much lower health, lower health care costs. Frame of reference. I, uh, in my upbringing, poetry was what the Bible was in many other homes, a source of encouragement, comfort, inspiration. Uh, so it's not, if, it, it, I find it natural to end this talk with, with a poem. And it's written 400 years ago. And maybe you know the title, No Man is an Island by John Donne. No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less, as well as if a promontory wear, as well as any manner of thy friends or of thine own wear. 
Any man's death diminishes me because I'm involved in mankind and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. Thank you for the attention. Shine a light. And I will now ask you just to stand up and we will have a little exercise because now I've been talking too, too long. Um, Just a minute, just a minute, 10 seconds. This version, but you can just warm up. Can we have the this up? little light of mine? There we go. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. It was at another pace, let my version, but it, it will come now. Yeah. Let it shine. Things take time. There we go. You can go workshop on network. Got the message. Shine a light. Okay, guys, now just one minute of housekeeping notice. So, in terms of where the rooms are, it just if you go out and you go out to the left, you will find the galleria that will take you to all the other rooms. All rooms have a golden a sim, a golden badge. And that, uh, golden sign, yeah, sorry, uh, that you can follow and see the rooms. Um, as for Sala de Conferencias, is the only room which is outside of this building. So we are in the yellow building, and there's a white building outside. That is Sala de Conferencias, okay? In all your name tags, you will find three stickers which has three blue stickers. They are used for you to vote. We want you to vote on the posters. You can use the three six stickers on the same poster if you would like. So on near every poster, you'll find a piece of paper which says dot voting. It's where you apply these stickers, okay? Please wear your badge at all times. And please also tweet a lot. It's 5VDGMF. That's the name, hashtag. 
And we also have a social media live blog. We are streaming live, for those who haven't noticed yet. Yep. <laughs> Here, right now, there will be a change of workshop, which is called Choosing Wisely, and it will be led by Professor Carlos Martins. Okay? So all is best. Uh, all sessions will be late 10 minutes because we start 10 minutes later. So please bear that in mind. See you soon. Have fun.